Oh, hi everyone! Do you like my new periodic table display case? I really love it. Also so far, I have mainly only collected different metals. In one of my previous videos, we tried to melt down some of these refractory elements. However, what will happen if we try to alloy all this metal together? Will we obtain some super alloy or perhaps even a new incredible material like one called Vibranium from the Marvel comics? Let's find out! This video is sponsored by Brilliant. I recommend you a great educational website called Brilliant. There you will learn how problems, and not your school typical ones at that, can be solved with a practical approach. You will receive a whole set of tools with the help of which you will be able to solve problems of such disciplines as mathematics, geometry, computer science, and other academic disciplines of STEAM. All problems are accompanied by illustrations, so so that you can look into the very essence of the solution and not just learn the algorithm for finding the answer. After all, simple cramming without understanding will never improve your skills. There are as many as 60 interactive courses in mathematics, natural sciences and computer science. And I took a course of chemical reactions, refreshed by knowledge and learned something new for myself. I strongly advise you to check it out, the link will be in the description. Registration is free and the first 200 people will get 20% discount on the annual subscription, so don't miss it! Metals inserted in my display case have some similar properties, which are common for this class of elements. They all have high density, metallic shine and also high thermal and electrical conductivity in comparison to other simple elements like sulfur or argon. But these metals also have certain differences. For instance, iron is very hard and cheap, which is why it is used to make practically anything, whereas copper has a high electrical conductivity, which is why it is used as an electrical conductor. However, some pure metals have certain disadvantages. For instance, even though iron is hard, it easily oxidizes in the ear, and even though copper has high thermal conductivity, it is quite soft and isn't that suitable for making tools with the needed properties. That is why, since ancient times, people have mixed some metals, obtaining alloys, which had much better properties than the raw materials. Nowadays, there are over 5000 alloys, that is why first let us obtain some of them and better acquaint ourselves with these materials. The first metal people began alloying was copper, which even naturally occurs in its pure form, which is why its extraction is quite simple. The first copper-based alloy people discovered was bronze, which consisted of copper and arsenic. Yes, it was metallic arsenic that was the first alloying component in this alloy making it harder and more durable. However, since arsenic is extremely toxic, it was later substituted with another metal, which was tin. This is the metal I am going to use for obtaining bronze. To begin with, I need some pure copper. To extract it, I decided to cut my old copper electrodes, which lay aimlessly for a year. I decided to make a 9% tin copper alloy. To do that, I measured out the needed amounts of initial metals beforehand. I am going to make an alloy in my own furnace, which can heat metals to 1150 degrees Celsius, and I think it should be enough. First, I am putting several pieces of pure copper into a graphite crucible, and I am adding in some borax, which will serve as a flux. Thus, there will be forming less slag upon heating. After heating up in my furnace and melting copper, I am adding pieces of tin into the crucible. Fortunately, due to its low melting temperature, the metal melts instantly. After adding tin, I am stirring the content of the crucible in order to create a smooth alloy. It is noteworthy that the graphite crucible slowly burns in the air at such a high temperature. After stirring the mixture, I am heating up the graphite mold, I am pouring into it bronze along with leftover borax. 
It's true that metal melting is a fascinating process. Let us leave this nugget to cool down. In the meantime, we can make another copper-based alloy, which is brass. This alloy is made of copper and zinc. To make my brass, I decided to use a mixture of copper and 60% of zinc. Just as I did last time, first I am putting into the crucible pieces of copper and pouring in borax, or as it's also known, sodium tetraborate. After melting copper, I am adding pieces of zinc to the crucible. Oops, seems like at such a high temperature, zinc quickly burns out, however, if I hadn't added borax, this process would have run even faster. Just as I did before, I am stirring the content of the crucible, before pouring it into the mold, in order for the melted copper to better bond with the zinc. Five more minutes later, I am pouring the brass into the heated graphite mold and waiting for it to cool down. While my furnace is still hot, I think we can also melt down these brass factory components, which didn't serve my purpose. After loading the crucible, to top it off, I'm adding some borax. 10 minutes later, the mixture has melted, and it's time to make a nugget from the factory brass. Seems like this alloy contained more zinc than my do-it-yourself sample, because it was burning out quite actively. Not even borax was able to prevent that. In order for the hardened borax to come off the obtained nuggets more easily, it should be sprayed with water. Once all the nuggets have cooled down, I remove the excess borax from them. At this point, the quality of the air is not apparent because of the oxide layers and leftover slag on the surface of the metal. To fix this, I decided to polish surface of the nuggets with an angle grinder. Now it's apparent that the colors of bronze and brass differ, and the difference gets even more obvious if I put a copper nugget next to them. Bronze properties make it the hardest alloy of these three, but it also makes it more difficult to machine it. Brass is much easier to work with and is especially suitable for making small components. This is why first watches and other science tools began to be made of this alloy. However, even hard bronze is no match for iron and its alloys. This is why the Bronze Age was followed by the Iron Age, and people have come up with thousands of iron-based alloys for various purposes. In this video, besides copper-based alloys, I also would like to show you several iron-based alloys. Let us start with stainless steel. However, iron melting temperature is way over 1100 degrees Celsius, and the heat produced by my old furnace will not be enough for making some iron-based alloys. That is why I decided to buy an induction heater for my next experiments which will be able to heat up this graphite crucible to 1700 degrees Celsius and will easily melt iron. In reality, there are over 100 stainless steel brands, but I am going to use a classical alloy consisting of iron, nickel and chromium. That is why I am weighing out 30 grams of the needed metals using my scales. 80% of which is chromium, 1% is nickel, and 81% is iron, coming in the form of such low carbon steel. Addition of chromium protects this alloy from corrosion, creating a firm chromium oxide film, protecting metal from oxidizing. After loading the crucible with all the metals, to top it off, addition of some flux is essential. However, this time instead of borax, I'm adding a more refractory and inert chemical, which is magnesium fluoride, because borax can enrich the air with boron ions. After turning on the heater, the crucible gets white hot in mere minutes. I can sense its power. 
you need to prevent overheating of the copper coil, cold water needs to be passed through it. After melting all the ingredients, I'm also stirring the content of the crucible in order for the metals to mix better. After 10 more minutes of heating, I think we can mold a small stainless steel nugget. Although the steel is called stainless, it manages to get oxidized in the air at a such high temperature. That is why to better demonstrate this nugget to you, I decided to polish it with an angle grinder. By the way, it is not worthy that it almost didn't spark as I was polishing it. For comparison purposes, I also decided to polish a regular steel bolt and it sparked quite intensely. Whereas polishing of stainless steel doesn't spark because nickel and chromium in its composition makes the metal more resistant to oxidation. After polishing the obtained nugget, it looks more like stainless steel, also it gets strongly attracted to a magnet when brought close to it. The thing is, I have made a so-called ferric stainless steel, which preserves its ferromagnetic properties because of containing a lot of iron. There are other iron-based alloys, which don't react to magnets at all, for instance, one of such alloys being magnaloy, which is used to make tracks of tanks or tractors. Besides iron, such an alloy also contains 14% of metallic manganese, which makes the alloy incredibly durable and, for instance, prevents tank tracks from wearing out. I have also weighted out steel nuts and bits of manganese into the crucible for making out alloy. After that, I melted it all in the heater. What's interesting is that when I was casting this metal, it was quite viscous. Apparently, addition of manganese significantly changed casting properties of the obtained alloy. After cooling off, I have got a dim and oxidized piece of metal, and I need to polish it to check its quality. Basically, after polishing, I have got a rather beautiful piece of mangaloy. How will it react if I bring close to a magnet? Indeed, it doesn't react to the magnet at all, even though iron content in it is 80%. I'm wondering, is it possible to make an alloy for producing magnets? Of course it's possible, the very magnet I am holding in my hand is made of the Alnico alloy, the components of which are easy to figure out. To make this alloy, I have weighted out 30 grams of the metal mixture, 53% of which is iron, 10% is aluminum, 19% is nickel and 18% is cobalt. After loading the crucible with all the components and adding flux, we can start the heating process. After melting the mixture, as usual I'm stirring the content of the crucible and then pouring it out into the heated graphite mold. In my opinion, graphite is an ideal material for making such molds, because no metal sticks to it and such a mold is quite durable. After my alloy has cooled off, it is clear that addition of such metals as cobalt and aluminum has also improved its alloy's casting properties and it easily filled the whole mold, and its shape has come out quite even. After cooling off and some polishing, at the moment, the obtained nugget is not a permanent magnet, because a special technological process with heating and running electric current through this nugget is needed, and so far I haven't mastered this technique yet. Maybe in my future videos I'll show you how to make a real magnet. Still, if you rub this nugget with a strong enough magnet, the nugget can acquire some magnetic properties. Well, you have learned what some of the widespread alloys are. Now we can try to alloy together all the metals I have got at hand. For creating my incredible alloy, I have selected 29 different metals which I had at hand. Let us try to alloy them all together. 
just like water in cooking serves as the main ingredient of a good soup. I decided to use iron, which will serve as the base metal in my alloy, in which I will be dissolving other elements. That is why, first of all, I am placing a big steel bolt into my crucible. Just as in my previous experiments, chromium, nickel, cobalt and manganese will be the main casting components in this alloy. To make this alloy harder and more rigid, I am adding a piece of niobium foil and a small vanadium crystal. Then I am adding a whole array of metals, such as aluminium, silicon, zinc, copper, titanium, bismuth, tin, lead, indium and silver. And how could we not use some precious metals? Small pieces of gold, platinum, rhodium and palladium will certainly give this alley some special properties. In the end, I am adding such refractory metals as rhenium, molybdenum and tungsten to increase the hardness of our alloy. And these metals will be accompanied by tantalum, magnesium, zirconium, hafnium and rare earth metal yttrium. Of course, I decided not to add uranium or mercury to my alloy because of their higher toxicity and it also doesn't make sense to add such alkali metals as sodium or cesium because they will just burn upon being heated. After loading the crucible with all the metals, as usual in the end, I add magnesium fluoride and send it all to my induction heater. After heating it up, I need to give it a good stir because there are lots of metals here and all the ingredients should mix well. Also, I have to be extra vigilant, because you never know what can happen when such unusual metals are mixed together. For instance, there may happen an explosive creation of intermetallics. That is why I need to be extra careful. After 15 minutes of melting and stirring, nothing dangerous happened. Although, wait a bit, after taking off the lid, flames started getting out of the crucible. Most probably, it was zinc and magnesium burning. That is why I need to quickly put the lid back on. Five more minutes later, I think the alloy is ready and we can cast it. Surprisingly enough, this alloy is very liquid, apparently all the additions have improved its casting properties. Oops, I forgot to hold the crucible in place, but everything seems to be alright and nothing has caught on fire. After cooling off, as usual, I have got a grey piece of metal and I need to polish it to better examine it. It is noteworthy that this alloy consisting of so many metals came out to be quite easy to work with. Usually, alloys with such a large number of components get very fragile. I decided to check the hardness of my nugget with a hammer. Hmm, it is worth of note that it didn't even crack. After running several tests, I found out that this nugget is quite hard and it easily scratched my cast iron vise. Besides, when being polished with an angle grinder, this nugget almost didn't spark, which means it is resistant to corrosion. If we bring a magnet close to it, we will see that this alloy has ferromagnetic properties and reacts to magnets well. If we take a closer look at this nugget, we will see that some metals didn't mix that well, having formed such balls. Of course, I am yet to find out all the properties of this alloy, but so far this alloy only surprises me. That is why basically, if we alloy various metals used in the right proportions, we will get a material with rather unusual properties. Also, they won't be as impressive as those of vibranium. And also in the end, I want to say a big thanks to a company called Lucitere for providing me such a beautiful metal cubes and this element stand. I'll put a link to their site in the video description. So, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see many more new and interesting.